It's a gender identification oh, hat. God. Check this out. Check this out. The M, <laughs> if you flip it upside down, you go it place. goes to woman. So you could just change your identity on the... This is fucking brilliant. Forget the whole coaching and fitness thing. We're going to make gender identification hats. Oh, you're going to be twisted. All you do is flip the M upside down. It goes to woman. So right this oh. moment, I might be identifying with a woman. And if you put it sideways to the right, it means like you're kind of confused but it's sideways to the left and you're a fucking goat and you're all set you just created a billion dollar idea right here we need to edit this part out so no one steals his idea think about it if you just wore a shirt or a symbol or like a a, a tattoo like branded on your head like (laughs) a a device a device that's drilled into your head and you get to just think about who I associate with today and it and it shows the world so they know how to address you properly. I wouldn't want them. It would be horrible if they called you ma'am and you're like, well, I don't see the M. I'm associating as a man right now. And you're just so you know, yours is on M right now. So I don't know what you're trying to tell the world there with that baseball cap. <laughs> even know what to say right now but what i wanted to ask you what the is hell was that, this episode about hold again? on about mcdonald's taking, no taking your kids on the ride no but is the why? m for mcdonald's because i've seen your note I'm show leaving. notes in your show I'm notes leaving. 100 stars 100 weeks didn't change it experiments development intelligence and patience I'll, don't give up on your future we all start losers we're all late bloomers got to start through the floor what you say yeah i'm gonna do shit my way Welcome to the Russian and the Freak podcast. I am Eva Eckert, and this is my husband, Steve Eckert. Thank you for clarifying that. They were <laughs> unsure of who was who. Now they know that who we, what we associate as. This week on the Russian and the Freak, we're going to be talking about how to take your family and specifically your kids along on your journey, your health and fitness journey, because we get this question all the time. I was actually just came off of being a guest on a podcast just an hour ago, and a huge part of what we talked about was how to, how you get your kids into health and fitness and doing hard shit. So that's what we're going to dive deep into today on The Russian and the Freak. And what is this podcast all about? I don't it's know. Why about... don't you tell us there, Eva? Yes, Steven. <laughs> it's about how to Wait, maintain... Which one were you and which one was I? Just to clarify that because you had to make sure that was... We had to do three cuts on this because we had to make sure that we added in who was who. You are so intense. That was what we had to add on. She, she had to make sure that we said, oh, we have to make sure they know that I am Eva and you are Steven. So make sure we're clear on who's who and all that whole... Very confused. We did three takes just to get that right. Let's continue. <laughs> Let's find out what is the show all about. Let's find this, out. This Let show... us know there, Eva. <laughs> Back to you, Eva. Back to you in the studio, Eva. <laughs> this reminds me of that funny show that we watched. Now we will never record this Anchorman? podcast. Anchorman? Oh, Let's God. Go. All right. This podcast of Russian and the Freak is all about how to maintain your equilibrium and function in a dysfunctional world as a freak family in business and in life. So you can transform chaotic complexity into your own personal normalcy. And just so you know, we have a our, we have the worst cameraman in history. He sits behind, he plays with rodents and snakes and shit and just distracts us and tries to make us laugh the entire time. The He's worst producer such a great and cameraman zookeeper. in history. Zookeeper. If you're putting that rodent on the, on the camera. All right, so we're talking about how to take your family and your kids along for the ride and your health and fitness journey. Because listen, everyone doesn't have this in their DNA completely. It's in there a little bit, but it's not completely. My DNA is a skinny, drunk, alcohol, miserable little prick. I just took out the alcohol stuff and that's pretty much left with who I am, except now I like to work out and, and trade it in the addiction with fitness and the gym for from alcohol. So how do we take them along for the ride? What do you do? Well, let's start with our, our habits, how we maybe, how we eat. Let's let's start with that because I think it starts it with it starts with boring. Us as well. That's what we always say. Boot camp boring. No, we're gonna let's start with start. how we eat. How about just working the simplest form? This is the answer I had today. I think is he said, "Well, how do you start you?" Because we do these hundred twenty four hour challenge. He's like, "We can't have our listeners just jump straight into a twenty four hour challenge." So what can we do? Just start small. Go work out together. Small little steps. Just work out together. That's it. Just start working out together. Go outside. Play. Have fun. That's it. That's the place to start. The bare bones to start. Get outside with your family, with your kids. Play. Have fun. And work out. Make that a workout. That's to where to start. The bare bones basics. If you start saying... If, we can't really start with nutrition. Like I was just joking about saying boring. Of course, that's going to nutrition, but we can't start there. If that's where you're going to introduce your kids to it, think about it. 
No. You're going to say, but, all right, listen, listen, little Billy, we're going to start counting your macros. What I want you to do is have this amount of this and this amount of that. That's amount. What, that would be I know where you're going with it. I know where you want to start. No, no, no. no. I no. know where you want to start no. with the kids. No, no, no. no. You want to start with the, the butt training is where you want to start. No. You want to teach them how to work the glutes. No, no. Do you think little Billy is concerned about working his no, glutes? No, let's forget about the glutes. And doing some glutes. fire hydrant exercise where you're lifting your leg like you look at your dog pissed on a fire hydrant? No, this start? is my recent training I've been doing, but has nothing to do with it. I think we. What is on that ball cap? Are you going to a game, ball game or something? God, you're distracting me. What is on that ball Listen, cap? Listen, let's what is that symbol for? Because I want to tell them something very. But what important. is that symbol for on the ball cap? I'm it's mesmerizing. Know. Is that the M for? It's a mesmerizing. You know what? I think it stands for some kind of company in Poland. <laughs> <laughs> this is a Polish cap. M. Is that like men's? No, I don't remember what kind of company it was. Oh, it's a gender identification oh, hat. Check God. this out. Check this out. The M, <laughs> if you flip it upside down, You're gonna it goes to it. woman. So you can just change your identity on the... This is fucking brilliant. Forget the whole coaching and fitness thing. We're going to make gender identification hats. Oh, you're going to be twisted. All you do is flip the M upside down. It goes to woman. So right this oh. moment, I might be identifying with a woman. And if you put it sideways to the right, it means like you're kind of... Confused, Do put it you sideways to the left, and you're a fucking goat, you and you're all set. You just created a billion-dollar idea right here. This is brilliant. Right we need here. to edit this part out so no one steals this idea. Think about it. If you just wore a shirt or a symbol or like a, a, a tattoo, like branded on your head, like <laughs> a, a device, a device that's drilled into your head, and you get to just think about who I associate it with today, and it and it shows the world so they know how to address you properly. I wouldn't want them. It would be horrible if they called you ma'am and you're like, well, I don't you see the M I'm associating as a man right now. And you're just so you know, yours is on M right now. So I don't know what you're trying to tell the world there with that baseball cap. <laughs> I don't even know what to say right now. But what I wanted to ask you. What the is hell was that, this episode about? Hold again? on. About McDonald's. Taking, no, taking your kids on the ride. No, but is the why? M for McDonald's? Because I see in your note, I'm show leaving. notes. In your show I'm notes, leaving. you have McDonald's in bold letters, okay. and yet you're wearing the male M hat. Listen, guys, I just wanted to tell you something, that this is what's going on 24-7 in this household, in this freak family. This is as intense as it is on this show. It never sleeps. You're looking at the ground, and you look very goes. depressed. No. <laughs> it just goes and goes and goes. No, I just want to ask you, because you say, okay, the family should take the kids and work out. Um, you should be scared. I see these nails and they're very sharp. Did you like sharpen them? Yes, of course. That's what they do. It's kind of like this. You have like built in self defense pen in each of your fingers. That's kind of cool. Like, just be like, <laughs> ow. You see? But why do families don't do that? Because they, what, well, there is some, there is some agenda behind identify, it all. No. Gender. Identify their gender? No, what did you no. Say? Agenda. Like, kid, I know. Why don't they identify their genders? Like, <laughs> no, Billy, you're no longer my son. You're now my daughter. We just lost so many followers right now and people that listen but to this podcast. But we gained one or two that we want. <laughs> no. Listen up. Before you even do this, you have to stop making excuses because I think that's the problem. That when you talk to parents and when you talk to a lot of people, the first thing people will tell you, oh, I am so tired. Or they're going to say to you, oh, I just don't have time. Oh, I am so tired. I, I, I just feel lazy. Like, and this is all. All right, so what do you tell them? What are they, that's their excuses. So what do you tell them? What do you do? Well, when they, when they say, I ask them, first of all, if somebody tells me I feel tired, I ask them, okay, what is your, what are your habits like? What time do you go to sleep? What time do you get up? How do you eat? How do you stay hydrated? I mean, I, I, I'm kind of getting to the bottom of it. And sooner or later, this stuff comes out like that they don't eat right, they don't uh, take care of themselves, they don't sleep enough. They they literally go to sleep and keep watching TV in their bedroom. That's what a lot of parents do. And I've heard it so many times. I even had uh, a, a, my, my recent client, that's what I was teaching him too. He was falling asleep with the TV on and he would wake up so many times throughout the night and we had to cut that hab habit completely. I remember it took us... A while for him to completely cut this habit out of out of his life, because this is like imagine falling asleep on with the TV. Like you wake up so many times during the night. Of course you're not gonna be rested, well rested, and of course you're not gonna get up in the morning as you're supposed to, and of course you're not gonna have the training session in the morning because you are tired. Deep, deep. 
deep shit right there. So let me ask you this deep scientific question. This is very scientific. Yeah, I so learned this in the, the personal trainer university of, <laughs> of, of Tuckahoe, New York. And that's where I studied. I'm a grad, I studied in Tuckahoe. So. You think you learn every day. What, if you have a parent, let's just picture this, close your eyes. I want you to close your eyes out there. Everyone out there, think about the same thing. But I want you to answer this, close your eyes. You have a picture, you have this dad that's shaped like a pear. What shape do you think his son is gonna look like? Most likely. A pear. What about dad is shaped like a pumpkin? That pumpkin, the, definitely. They, they kind of look the same. Kids, this like is, their parents. Like this is what we talk about. You know, Bedros actually, when he says this to the dads, usually he takes the dads aside, but sometimes it's such a chunky group that he takes them when they're all together. And usually he, we take the dads aside and give them like feedback and stuff about don't be slobs. But one, one time he just had to tell them right there in front of them. He's like, it's not a coincidence that look at the dad and he's shaped like a pear and the son is shaped like a pear and he's pointing right at the pear and the pear. Yeah. And then he's like, and then the dad is shaped like a pumpkin and the son is shaped like a pumpkin. And he's <laughs> pointing at a pumpkin and they happen to have red hair too. It was very fucking weird. Mm. And so if you're shaped like a pear, your kid's gonna, what does that tell you? What does that tell you? If your dad well, the, ha the habits that parents uh, bring to their children that we are the leaders of our families. We parents have to take the kids on the right. It's up to us to show them what's right, what's wrong. Because I've never seen a family when uh, parents would be fit and then unfit children. It goes in pair. At least one parent uh, it has to be either unfit or fit. Like, there has to be some kind of correlation here. Like, they, they, we've nev I've never seen anything like this, that if the parents were overweight, that the kids would be fit. Very, I don't what know. About the kids, what about the kids start getting, out of, start getting fat? What should the parents do? Well, if they encourage Same kids them. kids start getting fat. But are the parents working out already? Are the parents, like, involved in fitness? Or not? I don't know. Yes, okay. no, doesn't matter. Okay. The, kid the, kid, is, the kid never used to be fat, now he's getting fat. What should the well, parents do? Start working out with them. And so teach them. everything. And teach them Go healthy. Go work out with them. Have some fun. Run and, around. And teach them But should they habits. do something about it? Should they be like, oh, it's just a kid. They're fine. They're getting fat. It's just where they are. They're big boned. They have a thyroid issue. Oh, God. All these issues. Should they, the should they say something to the kid? Kids. Should they do, do something about it? Or like even bring it up to the kid's attention? Or should they not bring it up to the kid's attention? A, a, about the gaining weight? Yeah. I think they should. The kids should be aware of it in a in a normal like um, normal w way to speak to your to your kids about it. What's that? Hey, you little fat fuck! What are no, you doing? No, not like obnoxious and and what are you negative. Just call me obnoxious. No, Jesus. I say obnoxious way. We should address right, it what as if it I started, is. What if I started getting fat? Would you tell me I'm getting fat? Yeah. You would. Yeah. All right. What if I start getting out of shape? Yeah. You you fucking should. You should want someone to tell you. In the other podcast I was on in Atlanta, that was what they talked about. They were talking about overweight people and fat people. And they asked my opinion on it. I said, I couldn't have a fat accountant. I couldn't have a, a even a, I mean, anything like a, a dentist. If you can't take care of yourself and track your own numbers of your food and your weight and have the discipline to take care of yourself, how do you have the discipline to take care of my money or my bank account or my portfolio or my investment or my taxes? If you can't take care of your freaking self. So pretty much what I can't do, do business. what you preach. Like be the example of your business. Be I can't like do business with an overweight person. I can't. I don't think I could. And I don't think I could even use their services. I think I can't even be friends with them. Like what am I, what am I going to talk about? Like if I, my barrier to entry to hang out with me is, and I talk, this is always what it is. Because I'm not, if you can imagine, I'm not a very social butterfly. And... So if I, someone's going to hang out with someone or meet someone, I'm like, all right, sure. Why don't we get a workout in together and see how they respond? If they're like, oh, you don't hear from ever again or like, oh, keep pushing it, delaying and not showing up. All right. I'm not meant to be friends with this motherfucker. It's so funny that you mentioned That is my barrier just, of entry to be, even be friends with. Yeah. Like, I can't talk to you. I can't even have a conversation with you. And then on top of that, I know that if you're like that, probably your kids are not to where they should be. Maybe the kids play sports, but you're just cutting them short and not letting them live up to their potential if you're not doing that shit with them and leading them by like... No, imagine. Imagine a fat, a fat parent with a fit kid who's really good at a sport. Imagine how much better that kid would be at the sport if they didn't have a fat parent. Of course, that brings them down. And also the, these parents, like just recently I had a like text conversation 
And this person, I invited her for a workout and she was like, we are not a workout couple. And I said, okay, fine. And it's okay. We don't, we don't need to be friends with everyone, but then their kids play sports. And I'm thinking you are not showing up in this kid's world, the world, the, the way you're supposed to, because we all have potential to change. Well, you scare, we all you have probably potential. scare people off. You scare motherfuckers off is what you do. You scare them off. Excuse me? You scare Come on. Them off. Am I am I that scary? I mean, probably I just heard sometimes people say, well, intimidating, maybe sometimes, but 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 that's how we should show up in this world because some people need that. So it, 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 we love working out. Our family works out. So our invitation to hang out with us is first the workout. So how can the family work out on a on a regular basis? What do you think they need to do? Like what's something that would help them work out on a regular basis? Schedule it. Sit down and freaking schedule it. Okay, but how can they? They're all gonna what? Uh, they all everyone can't go to the gym like we do. No, all different combinations like we do it at home. Like we we do it. Uh, <clears throat> we we do it like different way. We go together. You work out with Tyson. Sometimes we work out with Ty. I work out with Tyson. I work out with Mitch. We work out together as a family. So we kind of that's how we. Uh, mix this whole, uh, I think, scheduling. But we do that. At, we have a bunch of different gym members. This, but I think every home in America should have a few have things a in their gym. house. Fucking highlight this shit for you. I can't see. From yeah, every family should have a home. Every home in America should have a home gym. You should have a home office. Even if you're not an entrepreneur, you still should have a home office where you are have a dedicated workspace. You should have a home armory where you keep all your toys. And a home library where it's time to like think and do smart shit and read and learn and have quiet time. So pretty much adult toys. Let's a gym, put it this way. An armory, you like. a library, an office. Because kids have their Every own home. toys, right? Every home should have that's not for the, the adults, that's for the, the kids are gonna use the library, the kids are gonna use the gym, no, the I'm kids are gonna use him. the armory under supervision. Supervision. Adult supervision. We just gotta go find an adult in this damn house. That's the only problem. But we've had, well, we've had the gym since New York. We've had the gym at home, even though we had uh, two locations of our boot camp and boxing, but we still had a basic a equipment, home gym. our we, home gym for years. Right, right now, now we have full memberships at two different gyms and still have a full-fledged home gym. Like literally, we could do a workout here with a hundred people and have enough equipment for it. Because there's always, it's always part of the plan. It's always a backup plan. It's always there. There's never an excuse. Oh, I couldn't get to the gym and all this other stuff. Although you don't even need a home gym, you can still get a full body workout with your family and zero equipment. So exactly. But it's good to tell, have idea. It's good to have the, variety. It's but good. tell the people because a lot of people will be like, well, I uh, maybe they cannot afford that many membership or they cannot not afford. Build a home gym. You start with the basics. You start exactly. with a couple. You, you have four people in your family. So tell you start them with, what they can buy. You what start equipment? with four medicine balls and now you're good. Maybe next month now buy four resistance bands. Now you have medicine ball resistant. Next week, buy four pairs of dumbbells. Just one weight each. Now okay. you have resistance band, medicine ball, dumbbells. The next week, buy a kettlebell. One kettlebell for each person. There's four kettlebells. The next week, buy four freaking other resistance, a different level of resistance band. The next week, Maybe a different TRX pair of dumbbells. Or something, yeah. Uh, you could have just one TRX that could be a station. You don't even need them. You build it up slowly. Literally, that's how I started. The first home gym we ever had was one pair of dumbbells and a stability ball. So I started a business in the car, yeah. Yeah. in-home personal training. It was peak physique, no excuses, we come to you. And it was literally just me in a car. And my nephew, Nicholas, would always talk shit to me because he'd help me hand out the flyers. And he would say, why does it say no excuses, we come to you? It's just you. He's like, who are you talking about? You and the dog? Because you had a great vision. It was that big vision. And eventually we started together and I would go to uh, at people's homes and we turned peak physique into peak physique bootcamp and boxing and people were coming to us. And that's where the vision is. So you look, you're starting small. And then you envision this thing that you're going to have a, eventually a home gym. So literally step by step, small little steps and will, you guys will build your own gym. So this is important. So have the gym at home. And this is showing it when you're at home. This is showing if you can go to the gym. This is showing even when you're traveling. Have a little travel bag. We will talk about that in a different episode about how to travel. But even when you're on vacation, the first thing we do when we go to any place is we check out the gym. What's there? And the kids come with us to the gym. If they say kids are not allowed in that gym, guess what? They're coming with us to the gym until someone kicks us out. I don't care. It's just the way it's going to be. By the time they figure it out, probably the vacation's halfway over, but we also bring some equipment with us we could do in the room if we have to. You can go outside. You can go work out on the beach. We're still doing it on vacation so they know that this is just how we operate. This is just part of life. This is an everyday thing. This isn't just when we're home. There's no vacation from it. You're, you're, you're listening. Your fat body doesn't care that you're on vacation or that it's a holiday or it's a fucking weekend or that you have little sniffles. 
It's going to get fatter and fatter and fatter and, if you don't do something about it. And if you guys follow us on our YouTube channel and the Tyson's Freak Fit YouTube channel, there's plenty of workouts. And by the way, he, uh, you guys can check the link below and you can sign up for the whole complete program with us. When you take these workouts on vacation with us, I created a PDF file of 21 workouts that you can do it anywhere and anytime. Very simple. So... Anytime we go on this vacation, I always picture this. We're getting to the gym, we're checking the gym, and if and we do the gym workouts and then the beach workout, outdoor workout. We were like in Costa Rica. We this were is why you have no out. friends. This is why you have no friends. What? Because you'll just go on and on, and that's why all that your kids say all your friends move away. You'll just go on and on. We're just trying to tell you how to get the kids started, and you're trying to sell motherfuckers some trainer eyes shit or something. And some herbal I'm just trying to help them out too if they want to take some workouts with them because you never know, right? Because this is another thing, Steve. We missed on that. That a lot of times the parents don't know I'm how to work out. I'm glad you said out. my name because I was in, like in the beginning we clarified who was who. You got the M on there and all. You should flip it <laughs> if you want. I know it. I already said my name. You guys don't know how to work out. You, you. Jesus, uh, how do you know they don't know how to? You, I'm you just guys saying. don't know how to work out. I show you how to work out. <laughs> Out in the mountains, Russia, we show you how to do it. You do it wrong. Celia Maddox is you know how not you know how not work out. But Holy this shit. can't be the truth that maybe they don't know and they need some guidance and mental. All right, so work out, take them along for the ride, start with the workouts, let's we do beat this. that down. Now let's yeah. shift into nutrition. Because I think nutrition is not the place to start of me automatically like teaching it because they're gonna be resistant to that. But now let's say we're getting breaking down those barriers and where should they start with nutrition? Where the parents should Where start? Where you start. You say you're taking them along for the ride. You're, you want to start at the beginning changing? teaching you them start, about... Well, whoever cooks at home starts changing their habits. So the slow habits changes. Instead of buying a fat, fattening meal, fattening meals, you... All right, so let's keep meats, it basic. Let's keep it. Break it down to the foundation for the, for the silly Americans that know no better. Let's break it down to the Russian style I'm for them. I'm going to drink some Herbalife. Because, uh, there you go. I'm trying to sell some Herbalife to motherfuckers. <laughs> this is why you have no friends. This is why all your friends move out of the state. <laughs> and even some to the country. <laughs> Please comment below if you moved out from the state and from the country. I would love to say hello. So just like on the training part, all right, you can't say, all right, we're gonna do a 24 hour challenge with people, you can't start there. We start with just have some fun, get outside and have some fun, and then you build it into a workout, and then you do challenge yourself, and you set up some goals and whatever else. On the nutrition side, what you said is it should start in the grocery store, what you're buying. You're the adult, you're the one buying the shit. So say, oh, my kids are eating all this shit. You're the, you fucking bought it. They didn't <laughs> buy the shit. You're a dumbass. Put that in the house. Grocery shop. You know what I do? I ask them, like, how old is your, how old is your kid? They're like, oh, Billy's seven and Susie's 11. I'm like, God, nowadays, that's, that's odd. You let an 11 year old and a seven year old go to the grocery store on their own? Do they have their own credit card? Like, how do they pay for it? Oh, no, no, no. I go into the grocery store and buy the stuff. I'm like, well, mm -hmm. ding, 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 dummy. There's your answer. Like, that's why the shit's in your house. That's why there's stuff in their face full of freaking Twinkies because you're buying that shit. So it starts in the grocery store, but I think the real place where it starts, yeah, it starts there technically in the grocery store. No, because buy. you're picking this stuff. You can't, you, you, whoever is doing grocery shopping, either as a father or a mother, you go and you do it. And if you take the kids along for the ride on the gro grocery shopping and they constantly picking this stuff, the wrong stuff, either don't take them for a while and set the boundaries and say, this is what we're buying and this is what I'm buying and that's it and nothing else is at home. And you so need I think to the real place it starts, it starts behind the scenes in the grocery store. Maybe the kids are there when you're shopping, maybe they're not, doesn't matter. Just what you bring into the house obviously matters. But the real place I think that it starts nutrition is, ha is when it's having a family dinner. A regular, consistent family dinner. So they start learning consistency in eating. They start seeing what a meal should look like, a dinner. It should have the protein, the vegetables, the whatever, and drinking water and hydration and all this stuff that goes into the dinner. And then it's, we eat together. We eat healthy stuff. We eat this stuff. And, and it starts with like the bare bones. Like just like, oh, go outside and have some fun is where the workout starts. I think a family dinner is where the nutrition starts. And then you talk about what you could talk about the food you're eating and why you're eating what you're eating. What do they like? What they don't like? How can you find healthier options for stuff and whatever else? Because there are replacements. And then you start getting creative. Yeah. Then you start, just like you start working out together, you start can start cooking together. 
I mean, not me. I don't know how to fucking cook. I could once I, I'm starting to learn how to make oatmeal in the microwave, but you start cooking together. So now you're making an experience together and start learning how to cook, how to cook healthy. Here's why we do this and teaching that and how to read the labels. Oh no, you don't want to put that. What's a serving? What's a serving size? Oh, that has this much fat. Then you start getting into the more nerdy, boring, annoying stuff. I think it starts at just at literally at the dinner table is where nutrition starts with kids. I yeah. Think. And there is so many, uh, really um, products out there that you can easily supplement like from fats meats you know fish everything is all available to us and and we can really change our habits so that's the bottom line and uh, there's absolutely no excuses for uh, for this m so the other m was for mcdonald's what about mcdonald's oh gosh this is a great story this is an awesome story. So our kids never had McDonald's in their life. They never had a fast food in their life. And they believe that the McDonald is a devil. And what I mean by it, because, well, we've recorded a lot of videos, like them literally saying that the McDonald is a devil because we taught them that this is unhealthy food. And they've really seen people pulling into McDonald's and these people were very unhealthy. They've seen how overweight these people are. They know that this food is, is really what turns these people into overweight people. So here we are. I remember we are in Poland and I'm, I'm setting up a meeting with a friend of mine so we can, we can I, I think it was even my sister. She's supposed to meet us in a certain spot and there was nothing around and I couldn't designate the spot so she could see us. So I'm like, you know what? There is that huge, because here it is, like everybody knows McDonald's. Like you tell them and everybody knows McDonald's. Even now in Poland, people know McDonald's because 20 years ago, they start building everywhere. So here we go. We have the uh, fast food places. And I said, you know what? We're going to meet right there in the parking lot. You started lot. building McDonald's only 20 years ago? Like 25 years ago. I remember when I was throughout my university. Did Titanic get into the movie theaters there yet? Yeah, 25 cool. years ago. My heart will go on. <laughs> no, but I remember all my university, like through my university, that's where they started building KFC, McDonald's. They were not popular. So I was the generation that did not know anything about fast food other than from the movies and always seeing the overweight Americans in Polish eyes. That's what Jesus. It was. First, you Americans don't know how to what? work out. Now you overweight Americans. Well, I'm Holy sorry. Shit. That's what we've seen, but doesn't matter. Listen, I was in um, Poland. I saw all kinds of turds walking now, around. Now, yes, look, McDonald's moved in, KFC moved in, and all the other fast right, food places. But okay, so we are pulling in, and I'm like, we're gonna be waiting there in that parking spot, parking lot, waiting for you. So we waiting, we're not getting out of the car. We waiting in a McDonald parking spot. And I'm like, oh my God, this is so horrible. We waiting here in the spot freaking belongs to the devil. And we there in Poland, but we not, we not getting out. And the kid, the kids roll the windows in the car and they see the people coming out of the McDonald. They start screaming, McDonald is the devil. Mac in, <laughs> in English. I know, I'm like, it was so funny because they saw these people, don't eat McDonald's. They were screaming. Do you, do you remember that? You, you were little. I think you were like f four or five. Ivanka was tiny little, little monster. Well, it started even before I think Midge is even born in the Palisades Mall. We walked by McDonald's and we have it on video somewhere recording. I got to find the recording. Oh God, this is hilarious. And Tyson was like, I don't even know. Maybe Midge was just born. He was like three or four max. And we're walking by and they have all the toys on the outside of McDonald's. And he already knows not to eat McDonald's at that point. And so we went up there and I interviewed him. I said, what do, do these toys look cool? He's like, yeah. I'm like, you want them? He's like, no. I'm like, why not? He's like, because it's in McDonald's. I'm like, so who cares? He's like, they put them here in the front. I, remember, I don't remember exactly how he worded it, but he's like, they put them here in the front. Just, it's a trap. He said, it's a trap to get you to come inside. And then they give you the poison just to get the, the food, the food, the toys. So it's like a trap. And he started in front of the store chanting McDonald's is the devil. And then he did a set of squat thrusts in between in front of the store telling people to work out instead of going to McDonald's. I got to find that video somewhere. This I, don't, is, this I don't remember the details awesome. of it. Yeah. Yeah. I think like, I, I remember I have it somewhere. that video. It was before even like we even smartphones even too much. So I got to find where that if it's on Google photos or whatever. So, so McDonald's is the yeah. devil. And, and, then and they literally have never had, you know, their friends 
because they say McDonald's is dead, but their friends don't believe them. They never had fast food. They never had McDonald's or Taco Bell or any of that other bullshit or KFC or There's even so soda. Many. Yeah. They never even drank oh, soda. Oh, yeah, another They never thing. drank yeah, they soda. Don't they, never, they don't know what a Dorito is. They never had a Dorito or a Twinkie or a Ho-Ho or a Yodel or any of that and other shit. And they want. And I used to eat that shit when I was a kid. Damn, I used to steal stuff all the time. That shit was good. Twinkies and Ho-Hos and Yodels. God, what's good about such a Freaking processed food? It's 19... 19- 83. I don't give a fuck. I was trying, to, I was trying say, not to die. Have, do you think that they have the same ingredients? No, probably got... It was probably used to be better. It probably got worse. Or maybe it used to have like cocaine in it. And they took cocaine out, put a bunch of other chemicals instead of... <laughs> <laughs> like Elmo snoring. Exactly. We saw that video. Oh God, funny stuff. Funny stuff. So we're just trying to give you the simple ways to take them along for the ride. Now, it doesn't have to be that complicated. People think it has to be so complicated. Oh, I can't get my kids to doing this and this. Bullshit. You're just not putting in the effort and you're not starting at the simple, most basic. Go outside and run around and play with them. Chase them. And then have dinner <laughs> together. Start off having dinner together. And so that where it starts and you build it up from there. And then what a- how could they take that, the fitness side to kind of finish off, to give more ideas, All right? What's their, their bare bones? Where could they take it to the next level? How could they take that to the next level on the fitness side? I think like we say, gamify. Well, the my like use all kinds of devices to kind of see how you're doing, how Gamify, you're tracking. Gamify, track it, or this like is we use my also, zone. This is what I said in this podcast today, and it was pick, do something you've never done, do something the best you've ever done for. So, if your longest hike before was one mile, plan as a family with the kids to go. All right, we're going to go on a two mile hike. And when you're done with it, two miles is a is joke and it's nothing. But if your previous was one mile, you now doubled it. When you're done, you're gonna feel you're gonna feel that sense of accomplishment and achievement, the kids, and they're gonna now be like, all right, now let's go do a four mile next time. Next thing you know, you're doing a fucking hundred mile hike or riding a, a bike ride for a hundred miles or doing a, a ten mile run yeah. or something or whatever it is. So pick a hike, I think, or a bike ride. Those are the two easy ones because they could you could judge how hard they are depending on if there's a lot of hills or what it is. Do your hardest ever bike ride or do your hardest ever hike? Set it out for maybe a month from now. And now you have something to look forward to, something to light a fire under your ass, something to get a little scared about, but something to have a game about. Now we have a goal. We have to now, oh shit, we need to train for this Mm -hmm. thing all together. We're going to go all do it together. We're all going to hit our best, our PR together and have our longest bike ride or our longest hike. And we're all going to do it together at the same time and struggle with it and then celebrate Together, not with Celebrate a bunch of fucking, not with with bunch of fucking ho-hos. <laughs> and so pretty much don't do what we have done with the hike. That we decided just like that. We're just going to join this group of freaks, of other freaks, and we're going to do a 15, 16 But you could. Hour? No, we were in a... We're talking about from someone from the beginning, what's the next step? If you already are active with your family, hell yeah, set some high bars and longer hikes. Whatever. If your longest hike was 15 miles, go do a 20-mile hike. If your longest bike ride was... 30 miles, go do 50 miles, go do 100 miles. Like, set your next best thing. Do the best thing in a bike and a hike. It's the easiest way to get started and to do it and to challenge. And it's doable for pretty much almost anyone to where it's hard, but it's accomplishable. So, I think those are some places to start. I think that's a good place to finish this with. You have some good strategies to start off to take your freaking family along for the ride with your health and fitness and nutrition journey. Yeah, but I think one more thing that I think... Click the link in my bio for some herbal life. I think that we didn't talk about the schedule, how our family does this every single Sunday when we sit down and we go over when exactly and what kind of workouts we do. Like we set this so clearly so there is no confusion who is workout with what, how we're working out, what time, especially now that Tyson is also running the fake fit. And we, we we need to know, like, this is Saturday. So we know what days, who's right? working out where, with who, yeah. and what type of workout. We know ahead of time so we could mentally prepare. You could have your bags ready. You know where to go, what to eat, when to have your meals. So I know on Tuesday I'm working out this time with this person at this location. This day we're all working out together at home. At this time, this day I'm going with you. You're going there. We're going to switch off here. And this is just scheduling, coordinating the usual stuff on time blocking. But it's important so you could because prepare a lot of people for what you're gonna need to get need to do. Because a lot of people miss that that part that is again, they don't they get up and they try to figure out what they're gonna do instead of if you would have had already uh, created the whole week, imagine you're getting up on Monday and you already know do I work out in the morning or in the evening? So make sure guys that you do this. 
Cameraman, what you say? Cameraman says, cut. Ca cam Cameraman said, that's why done, you lose all done, your friends. Done. Because when the point so, is done and it's driven home, you will just go above and beyond and overboard and let's beat go. the motherfucking dead horse. So, guys, please subscribe to this channel. Click the button below. And what else we should say? Uh, leave, leave, leave a review on the Apple podcast. <laughs> Cameraman, what in the flip is she talking about? If you need to share share this with your first, your spouse, your kids, your friends, the families that you're with, the other families you know with kids, so they could have a starting place because we get asked all the time, literally almost a daily basis about how do I get my kids into working out and eating healthy because they see us doing stuff with our kids literally seven days a week. They ask how to do it. This Send them a, this episode right here and then get them to like, review, comment, and share with the folks that they know that need it also. So we will see you next time on the Russian and the Freak podcast. In case no one told you yet today, you are freaking awesome. No excuses. No excuses. A hundred stars, a hundred weeks didn't change it. Experiments, development, intelligence, and patience. I'll, don't give up on your future. We all start losers. We're all late bloomers. Gotta settle through the sewer. What you say? Yeah, I'ma do shit my way.